Hi everyone, and welcome to another Autodesk screencast video. My name is Zan Ta with Leaper Products, and today's screencast will look at Revit 2017, the extensions, tools, and uh, Autodesk Revit extensions, the modeling features, and in particular, wood framing walls. And this feature basically gives you the uh, ability to take an existing Revit wall that you work with and generate wood stick construction for it. So here I'm in the architecture tab. I'll click wall and I'll pick a wall and do generic 8 inches is fine. Draw that wall. Let's head over to 3D. And you actually have to select the wall first before you use these extensions. So the extensions here under modeling are just like the extensions here under reinforcement. The objects have to be selected first. So we'll pick the wall. We'll head over to modeling and we'll click wood framing walls. What ends up happening is the window will pop up. It'll analyze the wall that we're working with, and we can set up um, how the sticks basically are going to be placed. Now, if you have a window or any kind of door opening, it will take that into account as well. So now that we have a wall with windows and doors, again, selecting the wall first, then going to extensions, and pick wood framing walls, you'll see it looks at that wall. Now if you pick more than one wall, then the software will understand and you basically are cycling through which wall that you're picking down here. So here under geometry, it gives you a visual re representation of what it's going to look like. Um, the name of the wall that you're going to be working with is the one that you're selecting. It again pulls the BIM data of the property information of that wall and displays that data. Under studs and blocking, you can specify all the information you need. For example, uh, studs, if there, um, if there is more than this one type of wall, you can apply it to all the walls. You can specify the length, the depth, uh, D for offset, the number of intermediate studs, um, distribution of crippling studs, uh, number of studs over an opening, number of studs beneath an opening, uh, blocking, applying it to the walls, generating horizontal elements if we need to, and at what particular height. And then uh, profile if it needs to be rotated or not. And then also uh, material that we're working with, say softwood lumber. If you click external framing, you're getting into the external frame of the wall, and so you can specify how the end conditions are going to be, what offsets that need to happen, whether the profiles need to be rotated, and again, what material to work with. Any T connectors, in other words, where one wall intersects with another to make a T formation, um, you can input any data as well. Openings, again, because we have wall openings, windows and doors, we can go through the process of specifying a particular opening to work with initially, say door 5, and now we can specify the king studs, we can specify any offsets, uh, profile rotation or not, and material. And we do this for each one of the openings. So window 1, we can pick what we need, we can do window 2, pick something else. We do window 3 just so we can get a variety of what's happening. And then you also have headers and sills as well. So for the header maybe you need 2. And then maybe for window 4 for headers we'll do this one. And then lastly user defined elements you can specify if you need to. When you're all finished inputting all the BIM data of what you want the sticks basically to look like for that wall and the wall what the wall will look like in overall click OK and the software will do its thing and it will automatically generate that wall for you now that wall um, will be created but it will also be created um, right where your Revit default wall is so if I select the Revit default wall and I delete it, I'm left with the 
automated wall that was created for me. Each one of these elements, if you will, is a family. <clears throat> and you can go through the process of selecting them and making modifications. So let's say, for example, here I know that there's an opening. So we need to control this. And let's say I select it, I can delete it. And that makes a lot of sense, right? And I select this and I delete it. I select this, I delete it. There's a member here. So then, and these vertical members here. So can we use, for example, say the split command where we delete the inner segment and see if it allows us to click that piece of stud? And it does. So if you want to be super specific about how you pick it, just change the orientation of your view. So for example, I'll go to a front view, zoom in here, select this, and pull this up. And see if it allows me to pull it up. If it doesn't, you may need to use the split command again and split it exactly where you need. Um, and it may take a second or two to, to try to work with the command properly. And then delete what you don't need. So it may take a little bit of finagling to get your objects to appear the way they want to appear. Be careful about left clicking the grip and moving the object like that because it looks like you're doing it okay in 3D, but the reality is it may not let you see that even if you're in a flat view. Uh, and then lastly, if you head over to a, a view like south and switch over to a fine level of detail, you might be able to manipulate it from this particular view. So if I click and drag that down, hey, that'll work. So you get a little bit better accuracy this way. Uh, and that's it. That is the extensions modeling wood framing walls command. Thank you very much for watching.